Hey everybody, I'm sitting here making some embellishments, ready to do my art journal spread for the next Flora Rose chapter, and I thought I'd turn on the camera so you can see what I'm doing. My next art journal needs to be steampunk. It is the requirement of the swap because my next art journal layout will be done in my swap partner's book. So, whereas the last time it was in my book, so I could do whatever I wanted. This one has to conform to her theme of book, which she has chosen to be steampunk. Now, steampunk is not something I'm very confident with, but let's give it a whirl. That's why I love doing these swaps. They challenge me to come out of my comfort zone and try something new. So I have two dies in my stash from Kaisercraft. One is this vintage clocks die and one is this cogs die. So let me show you what I've been doing and let me show you how I did these. This is what I've done. Pretty cute, I think. And I've done them a couple of ways. So let me show you uh, the two different ways. So I've gone ahead and I've die cut a whole lot of these guys. Let's see, let's put them here so you can kind of see the end product. This is the raw product, so these have been die cut out of cereal boxes. So this is a Cheezels and this is a Cocoa Pops. Um, I'm making all my kids eat packaged stuff because I need cereal boxes. No, not really. <laughs> But I, yes, I do keep all the, the that kind of packaging material, so I, they make really good, um, you know, ma um, yeah, stencils or masks to spray through and die cut embellishments. So I've, I've, I've thought of two different ways of doing this. So I'm going for that rusted look and I've chosen um, a burnt umber, a yellow ochre deep, A, what is this? Raw umber. And a, this is copper, metallic copper. And this is a gold. Alrighty, so all these beautiful, rich colors. And then the next thing I need to do, so let's try a couple of these colors so you can see what it looks like. So going with a really, really dry brush, I am going to first try this one here. This is the raw umber. It's quite a really dark brown. Now you can see what I'm doing there. So this is this brown. And by using all different kinds of browns, I think that it kind of, each cog will be a little bit different from the next, which is kind of cool, I think. This is the Burnt Umber, which is a lovely, rich color. Now, of course, you can go ahead and use inks. Ink up your die cuts. Uh, but I thought I'd use acrylic paint. Acrylic paint will sturdy them up even further. Now what I'm also doing is I'm doing this. I'm uh, making it kind of rough and even if you go between paints that's not a bad thing because it just adds more more dimension. Okay. Your layers are going to be they're going to dry really quickly because it's just a light layer. So let's really quickly just move onto a couple here. I am leaving the coppers and the golds. Let's try a little bit of that. That yellow ochre here. Let's do a yellow ochre cog. So really like rough and quickly because I've got about a hundred of these to do. So don't be precious about it, but don't rip your die cut either. And then let's, the last one will be the kind of a mixture of all of them. So a different colored cog all together. So this one just needs a little bit here. Cool. So we've got 
really quickly. We've got all these cogs. They look really good. Now, let's change brushes. And let's give these a quick zap to make sure they're super dry. All right, so see this really dark one here? I'm gonna start with this one. And I just wanted to sort of touch this copper and I wanna like just tap. And just like that, this has given it a really lovely look. So I am gonna stop right there. I'm really happy with this one. This one here, I'm gonna sort of do the same thing. And it doesn't look so obvious that um, yellow ochre combination with the raw umber gives it a kind of off look. So if I were to add the gold, it's going to be even worse, right? Because it's an even lighter than bronze. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to quickly heat this. I'm going to come in with my Distress Oxide, and this is Peacock Feathers. And just making sure that this is dry, I'm going to touch the edges here really lightly and maybe just in that middle there that's good so and just like that it goes from being just this dull to this really great kind of patina looking thing that's a bit white so you can have a look so that one compared to that one two really different looks and they're really great so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of do a combination of each of that. Now I could choose to come back and add a little bit of that dark brown, that burnt umber to the edges. And then what I'm going to do is with the gold this time, I'm going to really quickly tap around the edges. That if you add quite a big dollop of gold or of acrylic paint. And so what I'm doing here is really laying that thick blobs of paint. Like not just a thin dry brush, like a blob of it. It's really thick on the edges or wherever you want to do it. And then you heat it up. I want you to cook it. Like I want you to bubble it and blister it. And I'll show you what that looks like. All right. So I'll show you really quickly here. See how the edge here is all bubbled up? It actually creates such a lovely 3D texture and it feels, it feels like it's a bit airy. So if you squish it down, it then becomes this textured element that I find really interesting. And it's very different to this flat looking element here. Now, if you've added a little bit of the blue and you're not so happy with that, go ahead and grab your black ink. And then what you can do is you can really lightly, maybe even bend your element and just really lightly rub along the edges of your ink pad and it will gather wherever it gathers. And it just this does this beautiful, gold on blue on black kind of element and I really love how that turns out. I'll we'll do that again here so this one can just be a brown and gold kind of rusty looking thing on the edges. I really kind of feel that it needs maybe a little bit of this. Yeah see here we go and the oxides are beautiful because the oxides are chalky so they leave more texture on the textured bits and uh, I love it. I love how this turns out. So once again here, what I'm going to do, a little bit of, and this is peacock feathers. Did I, did I say that? I'm not sure. A little bit of peacock feathers with a little bit of gold and copper on this one. And then we'll add some black as well. And that just transforms it so wonderfully. Um, this is just an ugly metal, like copper, brown. I'm going to leave it like this. It's so different. This is a golden brown and I'm just going to do the same thing. Try to get some of that black on the inside. It's just grungy and really love how this looks. So this is the first lot I want to show. I'm going to come back and show you a second technique of what I did. So for this next 
a technique. I want to show you what I've done. I'm using two products here. One is UT, which is ultra thick embossing powder. And this is a clear, and this is basically embossing powder, but not fine, large, large particle embossing powder. Um, and the other product I'm using is this one. So this is Color Tricks Bronze Gold. Uh, and you're supposed to mix it with varnish and do a dry brush on whatever you need to do. But um, I like to use things more f more than just for their in intended purposes. So I'm using it here today. Now you've got two options. You can work on just your normal cereal box or you can go ahead and paint some existing and do it that way. But let me just show you that it works beautifully without pre-treating this. So go ahead and grab your die cut and go ahead and apply your verse mark. All right. And then what I have here on the side is I've put some UT down and I'll do a little bit more for you so I, so I can show you how I arrived at that consistency. So this is just a mixture of both. So I add just a little bit and then I add some of this bronze gold and it's a really fine powder and it's full at the moment so it kind of just tumbles out. Now if you just use some kind of mixing, it kind of looks like cinnamon to tell you the truth. And I'm just going to fold it in here and you've got this beautiful kind of large particle bronzy looking thing and what I'm going to do is simply pass this through it on this side and on this side and I'm going to do that. I have a little container here and I <clears throat> am just going to I'm just going to heat emboss this. So at this stage, you will have areas that are uh, raised and some areas that are flat. Now the areas that were wet and took up the thick particles of the UT will be quite puffy. And I don't know if you can see them here, but you can see this area here is quite puffy and thick and this one's quite flat. So then just wait for this to cool a little bit and then go one by one at this stage and just press this back into your Versamark. And I mean, look how filthy this thing is and then pass it through the particles and then quickly heat it. Now when this is good and heated and still really hot, I want you to pull it out and then really quickly, I've got a rubber stamp here, a red rubber stamp, and I'm going to press that down while it's hot so that it Im um, like imprints like a wax kind of seal. It imprints into the puffy golden molten, or in this case, I guess bronze. And you'll get something that looks like this. See how here it's all molten and it hasn't melted, but here it has. You can go ahead and redo that if you like and get that imprint to go all the way around or you can just leave it half half. Then at this stage what I would do is I would grab my peacock feathers and then go around here. I would then grab a little bit of my archival black and I'd add some even more grunge to it and really go into this Im um, embossed, imprinted area. And when you have a look at these two side by side, you see a big difference. They're both really beautiful, but two very different styles. Alrighty, so here you have it. Um, you've got two ways of making vintage looking old cogs and metal clock faces, a paint way and a UT or ultra thick embossing powder way, and a little bit of a bronze gold, which I'm sure you can use perfect pearls to substitute with. So go ahead and uh, check out how I go on to use these cogs and clock faces in my art journal layout, which is coming up next.